Hello, and welcome to our very first spoiler cast. Very special. Uh, this was something I know you have, in particular, really, really wanted to do, want to do this. for some amount of time. So we're doing it. Yes. And we're finally doing it. Very happy to make this a Patreon exclusive podcast. Spoiler cast. What? It's, it's technically a podcast. It's, it's a, a cast. It makes sense for us to not just have this out for somebody to randomly click on, be like, I just got spoiled on your spoiler cast. How dare you? <laughs> We're being very clear up front about this. That's right. That's right. We Maximum also... spoilage is about to occur. Oh, yeah. Everything will be spoiled here. So don't, 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 don't listen if you are. Nothing is off limits. Yeah, if you haven't beaten the game or something. Um, but yes, we're so excited to do more Patreon exclusives for all of you. We appreciate you so much. Um, I know this is a lot, uh, something that a lot of you have been wanting to hear from us as well, is to do spoiler casts for big games. So hopefully this will be one of many coming up, but we're excited to kick off the first um, spoiler cast with Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, and the, the Tears of the Kingdom spoiler channel on Discord is really very active. Very it's like active. among our most active channels. So yes. uh, I think there's a lot of you who are still having these conversations mm -hmm. and maybe you're still, you know, playing through the game and just starting to get to the end. So yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it. Because yeah. we've had to dance around so many of these topics I know. in our main podcast. It is. And me, me a little bit uh, more so than you who just yeah. lets it rip. It's just so hard to talk about this game in a way that actually does this game justice. Mm. Without having to talk, without talking about like some of these big things that I know people are, you know, trying to avoid if they haven't beaten the game yet. Like it's just too hard. Yeah. So I just felt like in our podcast, I haven't really given my full opinion on it yet because I, I, I wasn't able to. But that ends today. Oh no, you've been held back. I've been held back. I never been, want I've that. Been silenced by you. <laughs> I have a podcast and yet I've been silenced by you. <laughs> Explain this. <laughs> it's all your fault. Um, but yes. So we've broken this. Uh, we're going to start with the conversation of the story because, again, that's the thing that we've had to hold back on the most. Right. And then we're going to talk about some of the top moments, characters, and then we will talk a bit about the um, mechanics a little bit more. And then we're going to end with the big verdict of is, do we like this game better uh, than Breath of the Wild? Which yeah. is, as is a question, we have been not answering right. until today. Right, right. So this is, this is everything. We're just going to brain dump all of our thoughts about this incredible game just right here in this. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it, but let's let's dive right, right in to the story, which is again, something that we haven't been able to talk about in the past. We are gonna dig into some of the major story beats and also we were gonna talk about some of the theories we had early on when we were playing the game. I don't know if I have any theories, honestly. Well, I so have hopefully you have a lot, okay. Well, we, you and I talked about when we were playing through, yeah. um, you know, just getting a taste of the story. Like I was making predictions left and right. Like mm -hmm. this is what I think is happening. Um, anyway, so we'll, we'll talk about a little bit of those. Okay. Well. But yeah, let's talk about, let's start with just like the main story aspects and just just tell me as a, as a Zelda player that doesn't really play Zelda games for the story, yeah. how did you feel about this story? I liked it. Um, I find that time travel as a storytelling mechanic, I don't really like. Mm -hmm. it because be tricky. It, it's easy for it to get away from you. And it's one of those things that when you start poking at it a little bit, it can often start to fall apart. Right. Um, so for whatever reason, like this, this did work for me. Um, and it, it felt very coherent. It didn't, it, I feel like in games of this length, sometimes they keep adding more and more and more story. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what are, there's too many zigs and zags here. Like yeah. I've lost track of what the big overarching thing is. Mm -hmm. I never had that impression playing this game. Right. I was really impressed with the story for this for this game. Like I think this is the best story of any Zelda game. You know, it's it's definitely up up there as one of the, one of the best, if not the best. I think in the past, Zelda games and stories within Zelda games have actually oftentimes left left a little bit of depth in service of gameplay mechanics or, you know, big dungeons with big, with puzzles, which of course are awesome parts of Zelda games as well. But, you know, I, I would say that in Breath of the Wild, the story was pretty minor compared to like the bigger aspect of 
exploration and, and all those things. But I, I really felt like this time there was a better balance between the significance of the story, um, the, the, you know, the bigness of the world, the exploration, the building, like all of that seemed really well balanced. And the story was significant enough to stand up to all of those bigger like gameplay things that were equally important. So I thought the story was really, really well done. Um, I found the, you know, Zelda's particular, her arc to be pretty interesting as well. Cause usually she's kind of like a disembodied voice or she's trapped somewhere or whatever. Um, she's, she certainly was trapped somewhere like in a different time, but she was doing some stuff, you know, she got like, she got stuff going on. She was like very much, you know, discovering like her role in all of this. And um, I, I thought that piece of it was really interesting, even though she wasn't a playable character one day, hopefully. Um, it was really nice to see that she had like this really significant purpose in the story as well. Yeah, for the most part, you know, the main characters were very well depicted. Like, yeah, Zelda is an active player. She's doing a lot of things. Um, she is engaging versus being reactionary. She's taking, you know, her, her destiny into her own hands in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. which you don't often see her um, being. Um, same with same with Ganondorf. Like, you do get a sense for that evilness. Um, his, his motivations maybe I could have been a little bit more clearly laid out versus, like, he's just a bad guy doing bad stuff. Yeah. Um, but in, in terms of, like, oh, yeah, like, this guy's intimidating, this guy's scary... Like, he definitely lives up to that. I think, sadly, I think Link is the odd person out. And I think we'll talk about that more when we get into our big character discussion. But I, I felt something slightly maybe lacking in, in Link's mm -hmm. case. Yeah, the other thing that I really liked about the story is they, there definitely seems to be thought about this, like, the history of this world that we've built, um, the history of Hyrule, like... You know, this idea that there is sort of things be before that happened before, like this ancient civilization, you know, uh, these creatures, whatever, for the lack of a better term, that we've never, these goat people <laughs> that we've never seen before introduced. Um, the, the Zonai, all the Zonai lore, like that kind of stuff. It just seemed like the weaving of the world is getting deeper versus it going the other way where it's like, Hyrule is just a place where you're, you're doing the gameplay things, you know? So I really, I did appreciate that. I, I was a little bit skeptical skeptical going into it because I was like, who are these goat people? <laughs> um, are Am I going to care about them? Are they going to, am I going to feel invested in them? They're introducing these like brand new characters that none of us have ever seen before. But I found myself very quickly getting attached to them. And that moment, that memory where Queen Sonya gets offed was shocking for me. Like, I don't think I expected, like, that kind of death scene in a Nintendo game. I was oh. like, what is, what's happening? Like, this is so dramatic and so sad and, and graphic. Like, I was really shocked by that. Oh. Were, were you, did you have that same reaction with, with these kind of new characters that you're being introduced to? Um, I, I was not shocked as far as that particular scene because they, I think they did go out of their way to show like Ganon being, again, like he's like a bad a guy. He's a bad guy. And he's, yeah. not, he's not just like snarling with his, you know, pectoral hanging out. Like <laughs> he's actually doing bad stuff to, to earn that. Um, I, I liked, you know, all the kind of Zonai ancient characters. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was very interesting to see, like, the connection between then and now. And I, I enjoyed the scenes of, of Zelda kind of walking around with them and getting, learning about their world. And her history, her and, own history. Right, her own yeah. history. Um, you can kind of put together the pieces of, like, the bigger lineage of Hyrule and how that eventually goes up to her, which, which is, which is cool. Um, I want to talk, I know one of the big things about the memories with you is like, you were worried about those being done out of sequence yeah, and you had actually held off on even doing those at all. Cause you're like, I need to find like what the right sequence is. To, yeah. I was I, stuck in a real catch 22 because I wanted to do them in the order that I was supposed to see, like the order of the sequence of the story. Uh-huh. 
Uh, but I was scared to look it up because I didn't want to get spoiled if I looked up what the proper sequence was. Oh, okay. So I ended up just going for it, and it it was okay. Out of order. Out of order. Okay. I did see, like, the first... Well, actually, no. I saw the first thing last, actually. So... Yeah, so it was completely out of order. I don't, know. I don't even know. I'm, I'm trying to like think about like, did I, did I at least see the first couple yeah. of scenes in order, and they kind uh -huh. of set me up in a, in a way where right. I kind of understood what was happening? No, I, I did not do that. Um, I actually saw that Queen Sonia death scene really early on, oh. and it like shocked me so much that I like went on a whole just I was like just doing only memories that I needed to see what happens. Yeah. So I was like, wait, what What led up to this? Like, what? How is, why is there like an evil Zelda double? Like, what is going on? Um, so I wish I saw that scene later, honestly, because I would have mm. gotten to, wanted to know um, Queen Sonia a little bit more yeah. before she just died. Okay. So um, that, that part of it, it didn't end up being as big of a problem as I thought it would. But I do wish that there was a way to see those in order. I think that would have added a little bit more meat to that story it's, to see those events happen in sequence that, that, as they're meant to be. You know? mm. But it wasn't so bad that I was like, oh, this ruined it for me. You know, and nothing like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I have seen some people saying like, oh yeah, this is a major storytelling gaffe <clears throat> and like the, the not mm. understanding why they did it. Um, I yeah. think it's I think it's interesting because you do sometimes see stories told out of sequence, different chunks. But in this case, you can literally make the sequence yourself. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of it is it's kind of left to randomness of like, oh, I'm exploring this area. Now right. I've stumbled upon this, this thing. Tier. Yeah, yeah. And for me, like once I started going with the tears, I did... I wanted to focus on that because they were so interesting. And I, right. I just wanted to keep seeing it. Yeah. And... My, my order was very just haphazard because, again, yeah. it was just very tied to my ex exploration. 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 And, and I realized, like, oh, there, there's kind of one per area. So I, I did eventually get figure it out. Um, it didn't bother me too much. But, again, like, I was not singularly focused mm -hmm. on the story. Yeah. I also saw some people saying in the story, like, oh, the moment they talk about, like, the transformation into a dragon swallowing the stone, like that telegraphs the whole rest of the game. I, that exactly happened to me. I, so, I, in the first, when we started playing this game, within the first day, Yeah. I think I didn't see any memories yet. None at all. I think I just, I, I literally watched like the opening scene. Yeah. I played like the first, whatever, four uh -huh. hours of the game. And you and I were, were obviously talking about this game nonstop every single day. And I, I have this written down that I basically telegraphed the entire game. I was like, this is what's going to happen. In order to, you know... Oh, do they talk about that before you start getting memories even? I think so. there is some telegraphing for sure about oh. the significance of the dragon and like some sort of, I'm like, there's got to be a way where she's got to like transcend time, you know, to make it to Link's time. Yeah. And there's something to do with the sword, obviously the master sword. And that, that is her purpose in this game. Hmm. So you, yeah, you, you do get a pretty big signal. Like this is going to be sort of, What's gonna happen? See, I thought I, I was I was very surprised by that because I, okay. I I thought well well surely she's not gonna swallow this mango sized rock like that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I thought it was just like a figure of speech. Oh really? How does one swallow the stone? You well, like, yeah. Well, you sit and meditate for oh, <laughs> months like upon under months. The... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't believe they would literally swallow it's a stone. It's not that big. It's like the size of like a yeah, cashew it, nut. Yeah, it is actually smaller than I thought. In my mind, I was like, this thing's huge. You can't you can't even swallow that. Like, at all. It's like swallowing like a big like mucinex. It's like pill. a pill or something. Yeah, you just gotta like put water in right. your mouth and just toss it back. Right, but. But something about it was just so like I don't I don't know. There's literal. Something, it was something about it was like, like surely that's not what they're going to yeah, do. Literally. So I did have a moment of like literal. real shock. It's like oh my god, and then she like, like transforms into this. And those those scenes are very jarring. It's like there's like a bit of like body horror with like. Ugh. Well, you know that like when they when she talks to Minoru about yeah. that it's like this forbidden act. It's like you're basically doing something that's absolutely like against human nature. Right. You know against. Like all of their, <laughs> yeah, it's like forbidden, it's taboo. Um, this whole thing about like, once you do this, you will lose yourself forever. Mm -hmm. Like the sacrifice you're making, you have right. to understand the sacrifice. Like you basically lose your your humanness. Like right. you, you're, you're gone. You're going to be like 
you know, this dragon. Um, so they make it seem, and it is, very significant. You know, regardless of what they tell her, she's going to do it. She, I didn't know she was going to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That her personality so still, is that she would do it. I was still very it. surprised by that. I think they, they set that up well, actually, in Breath of the Wild. Because you you know that um, when she was trying to, like, evoke the goddess in Breath of the Wild, yeah. she's going to all those springs uh -huh. and, like, desperately trying to make this happen, like, to, like, ha have herself, like, uh -huh. you know, transform or whatever. Like, you can see her, that girl's determination, mm. you know, and I, I can see it. In this game too, is like that same personality where like she will go to any lengths to to do this, which is like kind of scarily incredible, but it is so on par for like her personality. So I, I appreciated that that she just like without even questioning it, without even I mean, she thought about it a little bit, I think, but she was just like, yeah, I'm always I'm, I'm meant to do this. I have to do this, you know. Hmm. So I thought that was very uh, consistent with Zelda's you know, her, her, who she is as a person. Yeah. So they did that, they did that really, really well. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and again, I know, I know people out there have mixed feelings on it, but between the two games, Breath of the, Breath of the Wild and this, like, I, I do really like that mechanic of just like, take it as you wish, take the story mm -hmm. as you wish. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it would work for every game yeah. because it is a bit non-traditional, but it does fit with what this game is. It's a, it's yeah. a, you know, a do-it-yourself kind of, uh, adventure. They should have like they they should have done a thing where you can collect the memories, you know, w uh, throughout the world. But they just give it to you in the order that it needs to happen. Like you can sure. still explore and and collect the tears yeah. in the different. Well, that's regions. where the Nintendo developer brain takes over. It's like, well, this one's shaped like a dagger, so you're gonna see that dagger now. We can't change it any other I, way. You gotta see the dagger. Yeah, that's how we did it. That, I know. I can see that. It's like the one that's shaped like a lizard is gonna talk right. about the, the Gorons. And exactly. Whatnot. Yeah. No, they have to. Yeah. They really have to. Like, it's like put the square the whole, in a square hole. The whole game will just crumble if you we do not see this. You this can't here. go off script yeah. here. Yeah, I get that. Okay, sure. I mean, again, I am a story person. Uh -huh. I was very worried about this, and I was like, oh my gosh, this gonna ruin it for me it, it wasn't the best but it didn't didn't ruin it for me i still okay. love i still love the story regardless of that i got it in a different yeah. order i did so before i beat the game i did a thing where i watched all of them in order oh yeah right before i beat yeah, it that's because good. i was like i refresh. just need to i do need to watch it in order for myself i want to be refreshed mm -hmm. and i want to see the ending like as i would have you yeah. know, seen the ending to the story so i thought that was a good way of going around that yeah. um but anyways, let's talk about the ending. Okay. Because that was, you You and I both danced around this a lot. Your way to describe it was you've never pressed the screenshot button so yeah. many times in a video game before, and I would agree with that sentiment. Like, that was probably, in terms of, you know, Ganon fights, a very challenging fight. Um, I, I found it to be challenging, at least. The, the first part where you're actually, or, or versus Dragon Ganon. Oh, no, the, I was just saying like the lead up to, yeah, the first right. part versus regular Ganon. Dragon Ganon was easy. I have a question about the, the first part. So my, my brain just went into like, oh, this is just like a one-on-one -on -one sword fight. But I didn't, like, can you use like devices or gizmos like in that fight? I, I didn't even think to try that. So I dumb, that he, so dumb of me. I think he was so fast. It was be, it would be very difficult for you to build something. Maybe I can auto build something and turn it loose. One of these just like maybe you know like flame wheels laser or something. Wheel. Yeah. I think, you know what? I've seen some videos of people doing that. Okay. so I think it's possible. Okay. It must be. I I'm kind of I'm kind of kicking myself for not being more experimental with that. Play it again. Is it? Okay. It was my my mind did go to like oh this is like a skyward sword like test of swordsmanship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it felt um, like it. Which which was fun on it was fun on that level because it was a good challenge of that. Mm -hmm. um, the bit about like I I wish I was slightly more prepared with the anti gloom. Stuff I had like a pocket full of anti gloom, and I so didn't. I, I told didn't, you that though. Everybody, I, told I gave me you that, a yeah. tip, but yeah, like a lot of the whole point that. of like, oh, your life bar kind of doesn't matter because it comes down to how much you can mitigate the yeah. gloom. Yeah. I was just prepared enough to get through that. I was just prepared enough, and I was high leveled. Yeah, I, I was like, I had done all the things. Right, I did not get the gloom armor, which I think would have helped me. Oh, I didn't have that either. Yeah, yeah but. Anyways, um, so that fight was very satisfying, I thought, yeah. in terms of fights in that mm -hmm. game, battles. Like, usually they're pretty easy, right? So that one I thought was a really good lead up. And then I felt like that 
part where you do the dragon part of it. I knew Zelda was going to come in dragon form to help you. Like, she has to. She always helps you at the end. Light arrows, whatever. She's there. Yeah. She's going to help you. Um, so it was great that she was she, she came to your aid. But um, that part was just a reward, I think. Yeah. That was a yeah. beautiful spectacle where it, you felt amazing. You felt powerful together as, like, a team. Um you know, it, it was just fun because, like, you felt like I did the hard part. Now I'm I'm gonna finish this up in the most beautiful, like, just amazing way possible. And it was a such a great way, I think, to end this game. Yeah, a lot of times they'll introduce a new mechanic at the end, and like sometimes you kind of wish they just stuck with what you'd been doing. Yeah. In this case, like, it was it was fun. Like, I was like, so if I fall off, like, she will come down and catch me. Like, is there any way I could just like fall to my death and nope. die here? Yeah. Like, it was fun to just mess around with that, and then also just like the way it was directed. Like, that's why it was taking so many screenshots because it was like, oh my gosh, we're getting like top anime moments like right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, Hammer this so button. So beautiful. It was like a dance. You yeah. Know? It kind of reminded me, honestly, of a less frustrating version of the Elden Ring boss fight at the oh. end. Oh. Because that end boss um, was also such like a. It was so beautiful. You just felt like felt like you were doing this like dance with uh -huh. this other thing that you're fighting, right? And the same thing, you're, the dragons are doing this like cool, you know, dance yeah. together, and you're you're just like th there's an ethereal quality to it. You feel very like you know the gameplay is very floaty, and you just feel like you're weightlessness lead doing mm -hmm. this battle, and yeah. it just really added to that. Like my heart was like pounding because it just was such a like an intense moment of like almost like satisfaction because you you know you're 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 winning you're gonna yeah. win you're gonna right. you're gonna be fine right. you know yeah. um yeah and I, I was also very curious in that moment like how is Zelda gonna get out of this one mm -hmm. like she's trapped in a dragon yeah this isn't good <laughs> <laughs> your girl is trapped in a dragon what do you do um because I was really that same thing I like with Breath of the Wild too I was like how is she gonna get out of this you know she's sort of trapped in, in this you know in the space but um I did you like that part where you like reach for her hand and basically yeah she, like, I mean that's part of that sequence that's great and I was yeah. jamming that screenshot button and yeah. that was very you know indicative of their bond mm -hmm. um so yeah it felt very like emotionally satisfying I 100% did not know I was supposed to hit the A button because I was just and she like, crashed no you, you started oh. <laughs> <laughs> Your ending was a little different. No, she was a she, she was, was a paste pan, on she the was floor. A no, um, but yeah, I was like so like like dumbstruck by this, like an idiot. I was just like staring at my screen, like, oh, and then no. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to press a button. Okay, oh shoot, I'm the little. Yeah. Well, sometimes you do put the controller down in these cutscenes. Like I'm just, like, I'm just gonna take this in. I'm like star. And then they hit you with the QTE. Like, oh no. Yeah, exactly. No, it was like almost like I totally had to like snap myself out yeah. of it to like yeah. do the thing. Um, but yes, I was like, okay, good. She like, <laughs> she's gonna be okay, and, and now it's a big. <laughs> Sigh of right. You get sort of this, you're on this high, you know, with this crazy yeah. dragon battle. You know you're going to win, but you also have this lingering feeling like, and then what? Yeah. And then you have this moment that's very much a moment between Link and Zelda, which is how they started this game, you know, and um, that that moment where he finally does catch her because he, he doesn't catch her in the beginning. And you're like, so just like you had this sigh of relief and you're like so just like oh thank goodness they went kind of full circle back to that beginning moment that's his clothes fly off yes you're <laughs> take it off <laughs> and you like roll into the field yeah. together romance um it was amazing it really it really truly like that that was a great way to sort of start and end the game. Like they, they had a lot of symbolic stuff with like the Ouroboros, yeah. like the, the circular dragon. And I felt like they really paid it off with the, the way the story like sequenced as mm -hmm. well. So it's really well done. Way now, to go. Now, did you find that sequence to be cooler or the sequence where you get, get the master sword? Well, should be... we should we move on to top moments then? Because that is my top moment. Okay. I was just asking a question. Yeah. I was going to save that for the oh, okay. top moments. All right. Well what, well, what else do you want to talk about before that? Well, I, that, I mean, yeah. I, All right. I'm good. Do you want more story? What more? I mean, we, what can always, we can always then? come back. Okay. So, yeah, let's get to the What other stories do you moments. want to talk about? Romance? Um, <laughs> Romance? Well, the, the bit about, like, the fake Zelda. Oh, like, the, the, the evil double Zelda? Right. I was, I was interested 
to follow that storyline, but some of the reactions of the characters in the world were a bit, like, too dumb. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, no, she's gone evil. Right. How, oh, how you mean, like, be? we saw the Zelda. Right. We saw like, Princess oh, fake, Zelda. Fake Zelda slapped me and took my wallet. She would never do that. What's going on? Yeah, it was like yeah. that horse was, like, really upset with her. Right. It was like, why is this horse so scared of her now? Right. This is obviously Yeah, I mean, it was kind thing. of telegraphed but, as a trap, but I was like, oh, I, I, this is... This is an interesting. Or like you mechanic. go to the Yiga area, and then you get like you get the cage dropped on you yeah. because it was fake Zelda. Right. I, I I was still interested to follow that. Yeah, because there is a lot of Nintendo games where they have like a shadow version, mm -hmm. like you know they have the Shadow Link, right? Right, where it's like basically I guess like Evil Link or something. Uh -huh. But yeah, I, I'd be curious. Like it would be more interesting if it was like a truly like possessed Zelda. Like she. Like was, you had to fight it or something. Yeah, you have to, like, snap her out of right. it. Like, she got hypnotized or something. Or yeah. she, like, was under, like, Ganon's spell. Right. You know? That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Because yeah, you could wonder, like, oh, like, is she somehow, like, blipping back and forth to do something? Oh, she's glitching? But like it's, glitching? Like, it's yeah. like, destroying her mind? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't That's know. I, I think they, they settled on the most obvious approach. But, 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 but I was still intrigued by it. That's true. Yeah. No, that would be true. And the, the, I guess one more thing that you kind of mentioned before is, like, I would have also liked to know more about Ganon's journey towards evilness. Right. That is always a good story to tell where no one start. I mean, maybe some people, but nobody really starts out like... That could be a game. That could be a game. Yeah. It's like Shadow Ganon. This like, is like Star Wars episode one through exactly. three. Exactly. Or like... Um, or maybe don't do that. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't do... Well, okay. Now I'm pod racing through the Gerudo Desert. Oh, I kind of would Take like... Take that, Sebulba. I would like that, actually. I would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> now we're pod racing. We could build your own pod racer. We did it. Um, but uh, yeah, like no one starts out like... I am just, I was born, I'm I came bad. out of the womb yeah. evil. Like, I'm bad, you know? I, I Maybe, I don't know. So, like, it, I'm sure, like, something happened to him. Like, did he have, like, a, was he bullied as a child? Right. Like, I don't know. Because like, he just sort of shows up. He's like, oh, I'm in charge of this Gerudo area. Now I'm messing you up. And the other thing that's really interesting is they, they really do, like, bang the drum of, like, we know we don't have men in the Gerudo yeah. area, like, the Gerudo kingdom. Like, you get, like, one dude, like, every 100 years yeah. or something. and. How did this one come out all messed up? Like, yeah. something happened here. Right. Like, there's some interesting... DLC. Oh. The DLC. The Ganon DLC. Ganon, Ganon Origin DLC. Oh, I would love that. Do that. It won't be that. <laughs> Ganon Naked Skin. <laughs> 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 you need the PC version for that. Ooh, okay. <laughs> never. Nintendo would never. But, um, but yeah, like, that's that would be a great story to tell. Because there's definitely, like seeds of interesting right. stuff there. You I know? mean, I very quickly got past it, but I just didn't notice, like, oh, you don't really have much of that yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and even Link, you know, we, we talk a little bit about um, story stuff, but Link's story, he's very, he's, he's sort of just like, he's doing the things, but he's like, you don't know much about his background right. Or, right. Or, or, you know, what mm -hmm. what he's, his childhood, I guess maybe a little bit from past Zelda games, but yeah, you just don't, you, you, he's not the focus of this story, really. He's mm -hmm. just, he just has a task to be done, right? right? right. Yeah. All right, so biggest surprises, top moments. I think that Master Sword moment was truly, like, a surprise. Like, I knew there was something about the, the, the messed up sword because of the gloom and Zelda, like, they, the light, like, putting it through the time light or whatever. Like, I knew that it was something to do with... She's got to repair this thing somehow and send it back to him somehow. Like, I did not think that the, the method to do that, it was jamming into your dragon head for <laughs> 500 years or whatever the heck timeline it was. And, like, we, like heal it through your, your hair follicles. And then Link has to pull it, out, pull it out of your head. Like, that's a little macabre, honestly. Like, it's your best friend. Who, it's a very unusual idea. It's a very to come to. Yeah, it's a little grotesque, honestly. Like if you think about it, it's like this is your best friend. You know, they have to go. They they got trapped back in time, right? And have to stick a messed up sword into their head <laughs> for you to pull out, like thousands of years later. Yeah. That's like, ooh, it's a little, like, ooh, this is kind of gross. Um, but yeah, like we're so used to 
finding the master sword in like very creeping through the woods. Yeah, very like sort of fairy tale ish, yeah. you know, sword in the stone kind of medieval whatever ways. Right. Like just pull out of the rock, it's, you know, you're good. Um, and having it done in this way was like such a shock to me. And then when I realized what was happening, I was like, oh. <laughs> It's in her head. Like, oh my God. Like, I've, how, yeah. and then the way that you like pull it out of her was like kind of like a long sequence, too. Like, you're, you're trying. Like, yeah. I think I failed a couple of times because I didn't hold the button down long. Well, enough. you know, you had to have a certain amount of stamina. Yeah. To be yeah, able I to. I had do it, that. but I was just like bad at it. Oh. So it was, but it like. Finger it slipped off the button. Some effort that you eh. had to. The, the little blonde hairs were like curled up around yeah. the bottom of the sword too. I'm like, ooh. That would be such a bummer if you if you did it. not have enough stamina in that moment to do it. You're like, Damn! I would be so mad. You had to go and like try yeah, to get some more. Yeah, grind some shrines or something. Yeah, yeah. more like um, heart. Yeah, I mean the way it, the, the, it's yeah. like the one two punch of like finishing the tier stuff mm -hmm. and then it just rolls right into that. Like yeah. you're still like processing. And then like then you're doing the interactive part of it. It's very yeah. powerful. It is. It was. I was definitely like. I knew the dragon and the sword. I, I knew it was going to come together in some right. way in, in terms of, like, this is how we were going to, you know, trick time kind of thing. Um, but I just didn't imagine the visceralness of pulling a healed master sword right. out of your best friend's head as a dragon. Is that dragon flying around earlier in the game? It is. And you just don't know? You can jump on that dragon without doing anything. Can you see the sword? And you can, you can do that cutscene then. Somebody did it like that, and I was like, "Oh, that sucks." Oh. I would have, not, I wouldn't have wanted that. Wow, that's interesting. I wouldn't have wanted it without yeah. the context. I'm glad that I didn't try to do it. Yeah, I mean, I like like because you're on her head, and you kind of like look at the eyes. Like, does she recognize him? Like, is there any? No, because she's lost herself. I know, but you still wonder. Like somehow, deep within, through like thousands of years, is there some recognition of all? If I became a all? dragon, do you just, think I'd recognize this, you thousands this of years later? Just cow-eyed dragon. I don't think I would. Like, who the heck are you? Dopey looking dragon. I'm a they dragon. Do, do like a little dopey. The eyes were weird. The eyelashes <laughs> were a little. Yeah. 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 I don't think. I mean, I think she was just like a dragon. Like she I don't know. It's, it's like that, that's that's very that's a very dramatic thing through thousands through millennia with yeah. this sword In flying your head, around, flying, waiting, for this, waiting for this. One in a million thing to happen? Yeah, um, unbelievable. That's right. Unbelievable. And then I, I got this cutscene last because I did the Lost Wood stuff last. Mm. Um, where you finally can talk to the, the Deku tree. And he. he oh, I still haven't done that. <laughs> oh. Well, tell me, it's fine. Tell me. This is the spoiler, 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 spoiler cast. cast. No. Um, so, yeah, you finally get that scene about the sword, and you're like, where the heck were you? And the scene was? Well, he, he explains to you, like, the whole secret. Oh, like, he tells you what happened. Yeah, he tells, and then he, be, because you're supposed to talk to him first, right? right. And then you get the sword. And you are? Yeah, that's how the, the scene's set up. Mm. It's like, usually you come here to get the master's. Okay. You see this empty spot where the yeah. sword is supposed to be in the Lost Woods. And then he's like, yeah, I've been, you know, watching over the sword for so long. And and then, like, the sword gets destroyed, got destroyed, but, you know, go here and, and this is where you can get it back, and then I promise to like take better care of it. Okay. Know? And it's like, oh, so you were aware of this, Mr. Deku Tree. Mm. <laughs> because it's like usually I'm glad that they put that in there because that's where the Master Sword usually is. Yeah. And so it, it'd be weird if he was just like, uh, -huh. <laughs> you know? I don't believe it or not, I don't like the Lost Woods, so I don't go there. The Lost Woods in this game was one of the best done ones in oh, well, all of Zelda games because it's connected to the light roots. Oh, okay. And that whole sequence between the the depths and the lost woods, I thought it was the best, the most well done in terms of connecting the, the and the sky. All three layers oh, were very, good. very connected in that yeah. portion of the game. I wish the whole game was like that, honestly. Yeah. I know it's probably very difficult right, to do right, that. Right. But that was a good example of like how you can do like an interconnected layered world like that in mm -hmm. such like a perfect way. So I, I, I think you should do it. It's a really fun. Hmm. It's not hard. It that sounds you cool. will not get lost and yeah. get confused. Oh, okay. It'll be fine. Um, but yes, that is definitely my biggest surprise top moment was just how like visceral that whole sequence was of, of pulling out the Master Sword, which you've done millions of times right. in Zelda games. And sometimes it, it feels significant, sometimes it doesn't. This is definitely one of the ones where you're just like, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, it felt to me like I was getting it kind of early um, mm. in the game as well. Even though like I, 
I mean, I'd played for quite a few hours at that point, but you yeah. know, sometimes they do really save it for like the last push or yeah, felt like yeah. oh wow, this is this is interesting. I like using it, so I'm glad that I was able to get it early, and I'm, I like that you could still fuse stuff to the master sword as well. That was pretty fun, like just like you can. Mm -hmm. I literally never tried that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, and it's fun. This is fun to experiment. Oh, but, it, it, I mean, it breaks off when it, yeah. when it runs out of energy. So oh, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Um, characters? Yeah. Okay. Characters. So we <clears throat> talked a little bit about some of the newer characters already in Zelda. Let's let's actually talk a little bit more about Link. Yeah. Because I think we, we, we both have kind of similar thoughts around Link. You know, we all love Link, but... That was one of the things that was a little bit disappointing for me in this game was Link's sort of reactions to the crazy things the stone face. happening around yeah. him. Like you just saw an in, like a, a vision of your best friend turning into a dragon. Your right. expression is this. It's like, <laughs> hello, anyone home? He has He's no. He's a himbo. He has <laughs> no reaction to it at. I was like. Dude, are you like alive? Um, so I just I would I think there maybe okay maybe maybe I'm being a little bit too over over the top here, but I think he goes it goes like this, <laughs> like he has a little gasp, a little, you know. But it's like uh, if I were you, I'd be freaking out, like literally, All right. just in tears because this will be a mind blowing realization of yeah. what is happening. So I mean, somewhere <laughs> maybe there's a balance of like give him some kind of emotion, you know? It's really ready. It's really time for Link to talk. Because yeah. this, they, I feel what's happened is they waited so long and they missed the probably the an right time to introduce that. Yeah, like an easier way. Now they're really backed into a corner mm -hmm. and the fan reaction, as we talked about, is going to be nuts whenever, no matter what, no matter how they do it. Yeah. But I really feel like they just have to rip the Band-Aid because it is starting to limit... What you can do. These stories and the impact of some of the stories where you have now, like, really emotive characters where they have very clear motivations mm -hmm. and then this person who's just a bystander. Right. The person that's the hero of the story. Right. The player character, the one that you're supposed to be as a player most attached to. Right. To see yourself in this character is the one that's the most sort of bland that that's not good yeah. for your main and character I, to do that i don't need that. him to like nathan drake monologue the whole game <laughs> but like it's pretty funny just though. break that seal and yeah. let him let him speak and let him be a fully fleshed out character like yeah. all these other ones and do some work on his personality development yeah. like we need to know who he is like is he nathan drake where he's like funny and witty yeah, is what he, is his personality? Is he, I don't know. Is, is he I don't supposed know. to be a really serious Besides character? being hot, I don't know. <laughs> you can't just be hot, okay? <laughs> hot is not a personality, as I've learned, okay? <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> hot is a state of mind. Not I don't personal. have either of those, God. <laughs> but, like, what is he? Is he supposed to be serious? Is he, like, just real dry, you know, that yeah. kind of, like, we know a lot of people <clears throat> with, like, a very dry sense of humor. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. is that him? Great. Tell us. Show right. us. Let us hear it. It, it. It's disappointing when he has, like, significant conversations with characters, too. Like, he's, like, talking to, like, you know, Pura or something mm -hmm. like that. And you just see him in the back going like this. He just has, like, some, like, <laughs> hand gesture. But you see him in the back because you yeah. can't see his right. his face, God forbid. Um, so, yeah, that that part was, like, it, it was just so stark in uh -huh. comparison to... Such beautiful characters that were crafted for this game. Mm. Such wonderful stories. You know, Zelda is just this full-fledged person now with, like, so much depth and, and motivation and, and whatever. Um, even the minor characters, you know, even, even our, like, cute little bird friend had more character right. than Link, mm -hmm. you know, which is a little bit, like, it's, it's like, weird to have it like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, they put mm. themselves in this position so they can they can dig themselves find out. a way out of it. Yeah, they can find. Yeah, it's out gonna of be it. it's gonna be ugly, but it's, it's gonna, just, you just have to do it. It's necessary, and then once you're you're done with the first step, yeah, oh, then get people easier. get oh, over it. Easier, right? Yeah, exactly. But that that first that first part is gonna be a doozy. That it's, first Chris Pratt line is gonna be shaky. Oh boy. <laughs> 
I don't even want to think about that. Uh, characters you sense. liked? Characters I, I liked. Um, I really actually liked a lot of like the side characters a lot. Like I talk about this. The musicians? Yes, yes. I was going to say. Even that little like the little head guy, the little like sort of like circus ringleader yeah. type dude. Right. I really like him. I like the little, um, you know, the Clover Gazette bunch. Mm, yeah. Sort of long. Yeah. That guy was yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, the the editor is really right. fun. Um, yeah, the side characters are so well done in this game where it just feels like the world is alive. Like before, it's like Hyrule is empty. There's nobody here. Like you just live in like yeah, that, desolate that, that wasteland. Yeah, that was know? a good upgrade overall yeah. in this game. Yeah, I thought that was great. Um, I've continued to be perplexed by uh, the whole Yiga side quest. It's like, why are you guys just bumbling idiots? <laughs> They're like, comic relief. I guess so, but yeah. like they also kind of want to be like you. You. It's weird because they truly are supposed to be comic relief and they're like bumbling around, yeah. you know, but they, they have like significant tech as you see when you go down to the depths, you know, they're like, they got a lot going yeah. on down there. Yeah. They're, they're pretty like with it. And then when you talk to people in Hyrule, they're like, oh yeah, the Yuga clan, they're really, you know, a thorn in our side. They've been after the princes. So they see them as like a real threat, but yet they're like idiots. So it's just a, it's a, it's a strange kind of, push and pull there, I guess. Um, the other character that I really like, and this is so lame, is the Constructs. Oh, I yeah. love the little, like, robot like, yeah, Wally yeah. Constructs, like the, the battery guy, and, you know, the little Constructs. that they, They're such fun personalities. Okay. Like, they're just, like, cluelessly cute, and, yeah. like, this is my job, like, you know. <laughs> so I really, I really did um, like, like them a lot. Um, I had to get over the look of sort of the... Raru and the um, mm. seems like you did. I, I really didn't. I kind of was like weirded out by them. Honestly. Okay, like they just they were funny looking. Somebody's been watching Avatar. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like it's weird. It was just I, I just needed to like my brain cannot wrap around like these humanoid whatever they are. Um, but once I got over it, I did end up really liking Minoru, um, which which ends up being mm -hmm. one of your sages. Yeah. I, I thought that was a good touch because. Yeah you kind of feel disconnected from that bunch, right? And and then you see the cutscenes of, you know, her really sacrificing um, for her people at the time and basically, like, dying and then putting her spirit into this, this construct, right? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was a good way of, like, bringing that more into sort of the... the, the main cast of characters and that ending when when she leaves when she's like my you know I, I, my job is done like uh, my spirit and then zelda's connection to her was really heartfelt like it was like oh yeah you you guys have been through some stuff together you know like this is a significant thing that happened and there's a significant sacrifice that happened so it was it was nice to see the connection between those sort of newer characters and the older characters yeah we're past that part but that whole sequence it was quite long of um, getting Minoru. Um, yeah. And her construct was was really surprising to me because I thought at that point, I was like, oh, well, you know, I've done the four things. There might be like one small thing and then, you know, we go do Ganon. But that was like a very, that felt like a mystery that you were solving almost. Yeah. Especially or like, like Indiana Jones adventure where you had the thing that was like the laser that mm -hmm. was going in. Yeah. And you had to like ride that on the, the wing down to the ground level. And I discovered that accidentally. Right, you mentioned I, that. I accidentally unlocked that main quest without knowing. I had gone up to those islands that were covered in the storm clouds yeah, yeah. without ever like undoing the storm uh, clouds. I was blindly wandering around <laughs> up there and fell into oh where that gosh. shrine is. Because wow. it's a hole in the floor yeah. basically on that island. Fell into the, the, whole, the, the shrine down below and then saw Minoru's little like face oh. mask yeah. thing. And then I was like, what's this? And so I ended up doing that quest without ever getting a prompt huh. for it. Now that is incredible game design. That's, is, is, that's is, quite is a coincidence. What that is. It's just like, for you to be able to blindly stumble into something like that, like, dang, that team knows, <laughs> they know what they're doing. They're, that's top quality. Yeah. Like, that's that, incredible. And all the way down to like the, the arms-esque 
boss fight. Oh yeah, was, where you're in like a boxing yeah, ring. Yeah, I was basically. like, this is just bizarre. They, they asked Mr. Gabuki to help with that. Yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> no, that that felt like a good like. All right, you've done kind of four of the traditional things. Now we've got one more zany, em, em, zany em, one em, until yeah. you go on to the end. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I like how you can ride the robot too, and just like right. like crunch your way through yeah. the, the depths and, and, and then, like stuff. equip it with the different devices and yeah. stuff. I always had big two big bald spiky balls right. on its fist so you can like yeah. knock things around totally totally yeah i loved it yeah and then like I, the, even the side characters you know like the the other sages they were great yeah i love them all i really did and you love sidon's wife or fiance or oh, whatever her. whatever she is i'm glad she never came back <laughs> said some unflattering things in the make, bonus q a let's make a buoy base out of her <gasps> oh no <laughs> Do a little, little, Yikes. Fi do a little fish fry. Uh, it's not a single character, but I really liked, and this is interesting because I felt kind of the opposite in the last game. Uh, I really liked exploring the Gerudo area. Oh, yeah. Where it just felt like, yeah, you know, like they do have a really distinct culture. Mm hmm it felt to me a little bit bigger than some Definitely. of the other ones yeah. where it's like, oh, well, here's the Goron settlement. There's like these five little huts and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, it's one that like, you went underground. And yeah, you yeah, wonder, there's like, like a sewer system right, down there. Right, right. Yeah. And it's just like unraveling their culture, which is so different from all the other cultures, was like really, I, I really enjoyed that much more than I did in the last game for whatever reason. Yeah, this Gerudo area, I agree with you, is like so much more built out. It reminded me so much of like Luke Golen from Diablo. Oh. Like that area, which yeah. I love. It's like one of my favorite Diablo areas of all time. And yeah, you're right. It has like a, a bit of sort of ancient mystery to mm -hmm. it. And even the quest that you do to unlock the um, lightning temple, you know, getting those mirrors to line up right. in the right way, like felt very... I don't know, like it's got like sort of like an ancient Egypt, like pharaohs right, and right. pyramids kind of, kind of sense to it, which I really, really liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, def I definitely felt like more built out than some of the other, other areas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to just go roll, settle the dungeon debate once and for all? <laughs> what since is you just, Since you just brought it up? Sure. I mean, did these? They are not dungeons, no. no. Not in my opinion, no. These were such a like net zero for me yeah. where like I didn't I didn't end up hating them I didn't end up loving them yeah, I just I just did them it was just a, something you had to do yeah. I did not love hearing about the imprisoning war four separate times <laughs> I got it thank you thank you I understand yeah. yes something 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 happened you were called upon to do this got it yeah I didn't need to hear that <laughs> um yeah it, they were so inconsequential to really to everything the, the, the overarching story was so much more appealing and the you know the world exploration and all the stuff in the depths that you're doing in the sky like these take it or leave it they mm -hmm. didn't even need to exist honestly I, I think it was a great way for you to be introduced to some of those characters like I, I loved getting the sages and having them be part of the story and if the dungeons were a, a mechanic for you to do that sure that's fine you know but yeah I think yeah they're they're not we cannot call them dungeons. Yeah. I guess we did a whole podcast on that. We don't have to talk about that too yeah. much more. <laughs> and people are still mad at me, apparently. Yeah. So I, maybe I should. Not at me, though. Not at, somehow, you're ne no one ever gets I'm never, mad at you. I'm never yeah, to somehow blame. Somehow, no one gets no. mad at me. Tell them the truth, guys. Um, so yeah. game, gameplay stuff. Um, so you have 100%ed all the depths. Yep. You 100%ed all the shrines. Yep. You're not going to bother with the Koroks. Nope. I pretty um, much, I did more completionist stuff than I've ever done in a game, right. in this game. So I feel very satisfied and very equipped to share my opinion on this game now because I, I think I did every, I yeah. did everything. I did it. Right. Um, I wish there was a better way of keeping track of the sky islands because I, it's, it, it could be easy to miss some of those. It's not as many as you think it is up there. Really. It's not. You, you've gotten them all. I think. I probably have. You have. Um, you truly have. You know, my, my hope was that it would have that um, Wind Waker feeling. It never did entirely because mm -hmm. it was hard to, without some, some work or some setup, just do that. Because you were always like, sometimes you have to go down if you fall yeah. down and get back up. Yeah. Or you got to make yeah. this device to fly around mm -hmm. and then, oh, that fell off the edge. Now I got to do it again. Like the, the convenience of doing that was never there. And I did wish they had something, didn't have to be as big, but something like the Great Sky Island that just felt a little bit meatier. Yeah. 
Yeah, because um, after you do the big, um, the you know, the Great Sky Island, all the other ones are relatively small and yeah. contained. There was a one area that I really liked in the Gerudo region where you did the, the anti-grav. Those were cool, yeah. And it was like, a, it was like an island chain that was sort of in a circle. Yeah, So yeah, they yeah. felt all together uh -huh. a bit bigger because you were able to sort of, you know, go from right. place to place. But you're right. In terms of a size of an island like the Great um, Sky Island, you didn't really get that again. No, no, you didn't. Um, there was some, some where... There was... You know, there was a couple of islands where I found them to be, like, overcomplicated, I mm. guess. Like, there was one where, again, I was exploring it in my own way. I had, like, dropped at the top of it. It was, like, a cylindrical-shaped island. And I was like, how do I get down here? Like, and I, I don't like looking stuff up in this game because I feel like I should be able to figure it out. And, like... I couldn't figure it out, so I eventually had to look it up, and it was basically that I didn't enter the island at the bottom. Oh. But it's like, well, if you want people to explore it all these different ways, then you should not lock them out of the solution by, because they got to the island mm -hmm. a, different, a different way. So yeah. I don't know. Like There were some little nits um, about, the, about the islands, but I, I still really enjoyed like being up there. I think at, when I first... Started playing the game like the island, the skylands, my favorite because it was just like, right. the newest part right. of it. And I was a little bit like, I don't really want to be in Hyrule. I want to be in the sky. Yeah. And then towards the end of the game, I love the depths. Like I was so into getting those light roots, mm. and that feeling of I think this is the feeling that people that like playing Pikmin get, where it's like you know it's completely dark, so you don't know what's behind, around the corner. Yeah. You're doing this like crazy exploration, and you feel very small, and sort of unsafe down there and then you know you light up an area and then you like discover you sort of do it like a little puzzle piece at a time like that loop was very satisfying and mm. i really enjoyed doing that i didn't think i would I, I was like i'll just get a couple it's not you know i yeah. won't i won't do the whole thing then i got totally addicted to it and i had to finish it mm. so. yeah i never found a real great reason to do stuff in the depths beyond what the game <clears throat> needed me to do to progress it like i after you finished it and you gave your whole talk of like what you enjoyed, I tried to go back. It's like, eh, okay, it's just I, I wasn't motivated to do it, mm -hmm. and I found a sort of a sense of sameness down there, and just like, what, what am I doing right now? So I just wandering around, and it's like, yeah, you could fill up the map yeah. if that was something you wanted to do, but I just, yeah, I was if fine. you don't, if you don't like that. It kind of <clears throat> loop then I don't think it's you don't have it's not like there's anything like spectacular yeah. down there that you get when you do it all or something yeah like so that. I was kind of left feeling like oh they maybe could have done a little bit more with that mm -hmm. um, there are bosses down there that are a little yeah. bit harder than so if you wanted a harder boss fight you could find them in the depths some cool dragons and gleox and yeah. things like that but yeah I mean it, it really beyond the just the sense of completing that exploration there right. wasn't too much more to it yeah, yeah 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 the other gameplay mechanics that i really struggled with honestly is like all the you know the ultra hand and well it's just ultra hand isn't well, it sure it's not yeah. the other it's not like fuse or any fuse of those was kind of well ultra hand and the building was hard for me i right. will say it, it continued to be a struggle for me I definitely got better at it towards the end. I was a little bit faster at mm -hmm. it, but it definitely was a struggle for me. Like I just, my brain does not work well in those ways. Um, the, uh, the, the fusing of the weapons. Um, I, I thought I would use it more honestly, mm. but I, I would always fuse something to a weapon that yeah. I was using, but you know, I wouldn't always fuse to arrows. I wouldn't always fuse yeah. to a shield. Yeah. Um, I wasn't changing out things I was fusing to it really mm -hmm. that much to experiment like I thought I would. I would basically just fuse the strongest thing I had to it. You know, like what I, I, yeah. would, I, I would have sorted by power and just fuse the, the strongest thing that I had. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought that I would be a little bit more experimental, but I, I really wasn't. So... Hmm. I don't know if other people are, but I was just like, well, it's like they break and stuff. So like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Ultra Hand, I really have mixed feelings about in the end because I do feel like they 
hamstrung that intentionally in a lot of ways mm. that would have been it would have been so much more fun and open to mess around with that if they had not limited it so much like yeah. this this grind for batteries like oh you're still mad about that well people are like oh well if you explored the depths more you'd find that i didn't feel motivated to explore the depths at all so i didn't find, so i didn't do right, that right. You didn't like, give me a better re give me a better reason to right, do that right, if that right. was my <clears throat> way out of that grind of, yeah. of using the dupe glitch. That's right, that's right. Because yeah. I literally spent like quite a bit, uh, quite a like significant chunk of time just duping. Just to, doing it. To get the full set of batteries. Yeah. To feel like I could properly use, use that. It. Yeah, but use I never, that I never fully got over that hump. Like I made the bike that was like meant to get around, but like something would happen, it would like break or it would like despawn. Like you would go somewhere, it would despawn. Right, right, right. Like they're they're like ninety percent of the way on this, mm -hmm. but, but that ten percent like really hurts. And they had a lot of like really annoying things in that ten percent that made it just <laughs> impossible. I think for you to like get over Please it. Please refer to our rider run video for some of the details oh on God. that. <laughs> I cannot believe that. Like, yes, like the whole, like the angles and the thing, like, ah, I was so bad at that. I was so bad. I'm sure there's so many people that are so Well, I mean, fluid. we saw, I mean, there like, was the whole, oh, like, like that took over like social media for like several weeks of like, oh, we yeah. made the Metal Gear, we made this, or we made that. It was like, guess what? That's cool for your TikTok that gets 10 million views. What do you actually do with that in the game? I guess it's just fun for that reason like, only, though. Yeah. It's, not, it's not leading Fine. for to like, you to have a better gameplay experience. Like there was just there, around in there was a good combination of stuff though that was that was creative and was and actually and was actually useful. Yeah, but I just never felt like I the the game never let me completely get into that mm. feature the way I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I feel like. The whole trend part of it too, like intimidated me. So instead of like wanting to build more, I was I, my my reaction was like, well, I can never do it like that, so I just won't do it. Oh. So I just felt like, I I was like, well, I can't do this, so I'm uh -huh. just gonna avoid doing it. I didn't even like I I barely, yeah, I barely I, I would only use it in shrines when I needed to use it. I, I did like the implementation in shrines where they're like, yeah. all right, we want you to solve this problem in like a very your way, you know, right. however way you want to right. do it. Right, yeah. Um, Yeah. I, I did like that mm -hmm. a lot. But it was just like when I'm out, it's like, well, I'm going to this place, like I could spend the time building something or I could just get going. Yeah, or and, you could just like fast travel there and run the rest of the way. Right, right. right. <laughs> like, the, yeah. Again, like those, those moments where they could have made it, given you a motivation to use it, but they didn't. Yeah, hurt. the other thing I think is kind of to the detriment of, of the building and the, the, you know, doing, getting vehicles and stuff is that Link is very agile and mobile. Right. Like he is like, you climb everything, you can do whatever. So like, I don't know, like it just felt like he doesn't need it. You know, he's yeah. like, I'm good. Like I could, I could just like, I could run there. Or I yeah. Could climb this. Yeah. Um, so I guess that makes it like, please don't take away that Link's ability to, to climb stuff. Cause that's really fun. Um, but like, if they took it away, let's say that he couldn't climb certain mm. parts of it, and the only way you can get up over yeah. a cliff is to build a bike that hovers, or something, or a ladder, or something, then maybe that will motivate you to do it. But yeah, because I agree. Link is so agile and so like capable, it's like, well, why bother? Like we we, we shouldn't even have to have the the ride or run debate. Like that should be the whole reason that these exist. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're opening up a whole new avenue for you to get around that like never is gonna change your life. That's ne that's never been possible right. before. But it, all of these it, is possible it, because you can didn't. do it now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that that was, I never got over that either. It did not take away from my experience because I think I was perfectly happy just to like run and yeah. climb and be on a horse sometimes. And yeah, yeah I rode a hover bike sometimes. I, I made a little pontoon boat mm -hmm. to get around and go on the river a very like bare bones kind yeah, of thing but yeah. you know it was fine I, I didn't need to build like the metal gear you know yeah, robot yeah. or something like that yeah. um the other thing uh you know with some of the mechanics i do agree that the shrines were yes i wanted to go back to shrines yeah let's go back to shrines because I, I did all the shrines um i want to I, I do agree with you that having the shrines and having that idea of Solving it in any way possible is really, really cool. But there is like, there are some some things that they do where they totally just like overcomplicated, I think. Like oh. Some of the shrines were just like, 
what what is it that you actually want me to do? Because it's what you want me to do is kind of dumb, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Like there was a couple of shrines that had those like big targets. Yes. And you had to use like the floaty bouncy ball to do a thing, and I'm like, this is so annoying. Like I'm not doing, I'm bomb arrowing this. I don't care. I kind of like this. I, I just I just bomb arrowed my way through it though. Oh, you could do that. Yes. And that would trigger it. Yes. Because oh. I was lazy. I was like, this is. I know well, what that's you. Fine. It's always. It's also like I know what you want me to do, but the thing that you want me to do is hella annoying. Well, at least so. you got you got out of doing something annoying. Yeah, but don't put the annoying thing in there in the first. But part. I didn't think it was annoying. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Well, I know we, we right. talked early on of like, oh, is the balance of these shrines out of whack because oh, it was like all, all alternate. In the yeah. end, and in again, the end I, I didn't do them all like you did, so maybe you feel differently. I felt like the variety did. Balance yes, yes, I agree. I, I I totally agree. I think in the beginning they just really want you to get used to it because that's like yeah. the main thing that you're trying to you know get the player to learn in the game. So I understand that. Um, and uh, the shrines definitely helped. You know, you get used to that mechanic. Yeah. So they that did its job. Um, in the end, I, I I agree. I think that there was a lot of good variety in terms of like shrines that had just the you know the battling like the naked and naked and afraid shrines, mm -hmm. which I always loved. Those, Those were cool. Great. Yeah. I like the ones where you um, basically like solve the, a puzzle just to get the shrine. And then when you go in, and you just get the Raru's blessing. Those are too a, many of those. There's a lot of those. Yeah, there the were end. a lot of those. A I lot was of really those towards the end. This because, is lazy. Well, you're in like a crazy cave. You don't know how to get. I don't out. care. There was one shrine that I really liked, which was um, called like I think it was called like the Ice Key or something like that, where you basically had to like melt these. You had to like make ice cubes in, or like ice blocks in like the nearby river, come back and melt it to the right size uh, over the campfire, and then put oh, it into wow. the wall. Oh, I don't think I did that one. And that, that opened cool. up a shrine. So mm. that was really, those were really That's cool. Neat. They didn't have very many of those, like two of those. Yeah. But those were really cool. The ones in the sky were really fun. We had to bring the crystal onto yeah, like yeah. an airplane, right. like you make a Zoni wing yeah. or something like that, and like try to transport it. And yeah, I was. Yeah. Always failed the first time, but the, the thing would just tumble yeah. to, the, to the ground, and there was some, always some kind of like crashing of the airplane right. problem that I would have, yeah. or some sort of falling to my death. Death, uh, death. But I really liked those as well. So, yeah, those are some creative shrines, and I, I mean, I was motivated. Like even in Breath of the Wild, I did not do all the shrines, but I was like very motivated. I was yeah. like, this is really fun. Like I want to do all of these. These right. are great. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I really like those. Towards the end, I, I really did right. come to appreciate them. So yeah, the game did really expose like how limited the abilities you had in Breath of the Wild were. Mm -hmm. Where one was literally a bomb. <laughs> yes, um, I missed stasis. I missed stasis. Yeah, I mean, so, some of those were cool, and, and the, definitely the way they used them in shrines were very cool because they, they built puzzles specifically around those. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like they didn't. Uh, they had some maybe some rough edges with some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and they're all new abilities, so I feel like there's maybe some balancing and some, yeah, smoothing out of things that needed to happen. Yeah, I don't. I wonder if they would ever go back to these again, or are we just gonna throw yeah, it all I, away? I probably doubt they will. I think they'll throw it away too. Yeah. I think the next Zelda game is gonna be right. completely different than this. So. But again, that motivation. Again, I keep going back to Ultra Hand of like, we've made this great thing for you to tinker around and do stuff with, but. We're kind of going to make it a pain for you to to do it. Like yeah. I, I really don't understand that. Especially for like a new thing that they want you to be excited about. But it's like the new thing and for they the game. Want you to use. Maybe they didn't think it was annoying. Maybe they thought it was just like part of sort of the the satisfaction of yeah. you know um, getting to the expertise level of Ultra Hand, and that's what you they in their minds you needed to do. I don't think you should have locked it behind. All of these layers, so yeah. you gotta make the barrier enter enter a little bit easier right. for a new player. You right. know, I, right. I would say, like, I think you and I are both pretty normal players. Mm -hmm. I would say we're not bad. We're not like an extremely good, but we're like you know the normal, probably like ninety percent of the people playing. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if other people feel this way, but that's kind of like yeah how we both felt about that. Yeah. All right, you've avoided it. All right, I haven't avoided any. I don't know why you keep. Positioning Long it this way. Enough. You're ducking the question. You're just gonna like say you need to go to the bathroom and you run away. Have avoided. Hear my it car starting. Long so enough. have you. Let's 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 just okay. Let's set this up a little bit. We're gonna answer the question: Is Tears of the Kingdom better than Breath of the Wild? Mm -hmm. Now to set it up, you 
were the global lead for the launch of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> you single-handedly worked with all of these developers. You know, this is the the game in the Zelda series that pretty much like changed the trajectory of the series. Right. There's a lot of outside factors, I would say, that contributed to you putting Breath of the Wild as your favorite game of all time. Right. Um, but do you do you think that you can look at this comparison from a pure game to game comparison, or are you going to look at it with all of those other factors in mind? Well, a, I don't think I have to if this is my my rating. But b, if I if I did have to, I would say I I still prefer Breath of the Wild because oh. I still think there were enough like there's more stuff in Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And like, like we were just talking about, some of that can result in some amazing new experiences that you couldn't have before, but some of that results in a head scratch. Okay. Like, like, why was I not motivated to explore this huge part of the game mm -hmm. in the depths? Okay. Like, that feels like a miss. Okay. Where I just didn't have any motivation to do it. Okay. Um, you know, the ultra hand stuff that we talked about. Amazing highs, some pretty annoying lows. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Breath of the Wild, like obviously the scope at the time was massive in comparison to this game, smaller. much smaller. But yeah. I feel like they delivered, they had a better hit rate, success percentage on those things okay. than they did. And also like, you know, they, those systems that they introduced still play a huge part in Tears of the Kingdom. Like the whole like chemistry system of how mm -hmm. the world interacts with itself that was yeah. so mind blowing um, in the first game. It's like right. now, now we have new things that are mind blowing, but they're kind of built on the backs of yeah. the systems of this world. Yeah, a lot of people were saying like Breath of the Wild walked so Tears of the Kingdom could right. run. You right. know, there was like so many of those comparisons. Like I, you couldn't have, you could not be here unless I was here. Yeah, first, so it's right? so it's a very hard question to answer, and I, I like the mm -hmm. comparison a lot of people in our Discord have made, where it's like. Tears of the Kingdom feels like the second quest to Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah, So, definitely. like, I, I do wish I could bunch these games together and just, like, combine them into one experience and yeah. say, like, yes, this is my favorite ever, but I can't. So it's something annoying that I have to deal with. Like, don't get me wrong, like, this is still probably, like, an all-time, like, top ten game for me. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, capturing the magic, and yeah, like, I do have a lot of, like, personal bias on that. But it's me, so I can do it. It's, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I I'm think not it's ashamed be, of that. It, I think it's, it's very hard for you to disentangle yourself right. from the moment the, the, the moment that you were in in your life when that game, exactly. when Breath of the Wild came out. That's always going to be true for you, you know? Right. So that is how you're going to, that's the lens that you're going to look at it through, which is totally fine because it's your rating. Yeah. I'm going to say that Tears of the Kingdom is better than Breath of the Wild. I think there has never been a game that's motivated me to become a completionist. Hmm. Like, I, you know me. Like, I'm yeah. very, like, I got a lot of games to play. I'm very short attention span. I have commitment issues. So <laughs> I do not like to dilly-dally in this, like, completionist yeah. kind of thing. I can never be Gerard, you know? <laughs> um, so usually I'm, like, main, main story finished. I'm out. See ya. Right. Um, like... I never played a Zelda game like this before, where I, I was just so, I don't, even, for, I don't even know why, like, I was motivated to do this. There was nobody that was, like, pressuring me, like, oh, you got to get all the shrines. Yeah. I did not do that in Breath of the Wild. Um, I don't know. There was something about this game that really just captured my attention. I thought about it all the time. I, I was so, like, towards the end, you know, I got into this groove where it just felt very satisfying, like my arc of getting the light route and then following the light route up to potentially a shrine that I didn't get yet, getting that shrine, like this whole layered world that they created, like there was something about that that just was very satisfying for me. And I would say like felt, the whole thing kind of felt like a really big but very relax, relaxing Zelda dungeon. Like it just had that sense of like, you know, getting new skills and, and using that to your advantage. Like, there was something about that loop that was very well done that I just 
Like, I, I really loved it. And I think that they, they did not have that in Breath of the Wild. Um, obviously, I think this is one of those things where it's like, yes, this game could not have existed without the foundation that was built um, by Breath of the Wild. So it's kind of like a one of those things where it's like, well, how can you even compare the two? Mm -hmm. But this, I think this is a better game. This is truly, like, a better game experience um, from that like core mechanic of exploration, which was a, a key part of Breath of the Wild that they totally blew out for Tears of the Kingdom to the much better, you know, narrative, um, to some really inventive gameplay mechanics. Some of them that I jived with and some of them that I didn't, but clearly other people had a lot of fun with the gameplay mechanics. Um, I think this is like, yeah, this is like the best Zelda game of all time. Like they, they really, it's pretty amazing, you know? They really did it. Hmm. So this is uh, uh, past uh, Twilight Princess, yeah. past all these well, others? Breath of the Wild was my number one before. This is number one now. Hmm. All right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, still got a couple more games to play this year, but yeah. it's going to be hard to top this. <laughs> it's going to be hard. 190 hours later, I feel pretty good about this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't want people to, to get the wrong impression about what I was saying, where it's like, again, this is like all time like a top 10 game for me but um it's just a tough hill to top and again like the fact that the games are pulling so much from each, each other, other so hard it, to it, disentangle it's it. this very unique yeah. situation that you don't often see in games yeah yeah totally. where it's hard to, it's hard to make that decision which is again why we want to just <laughs> mash them up yeah yeah i i do get a little bit sad thinking about you know another zelda game probably won't exist in this world yeah, I think they'll, and on, they'll on do engine, something new. They're yeah. gonna do, they're gonna absolutely do something new. I think so. We should all just relish it. You know yeah. what a wonderful experience these two games gave us. What a amazing, you know, new perspective into what a Zelda game could be for its faults and its shortcomings. Like it's still just a feat of unbelievable magic. So yeah. like we're so lucky that we have these two games and we could play them and enjoy them. Like what a what a great. What a great place to be, right? right? For as a Zelda fan, mm -hmm. it's a great place to be. All right, final final thoughts. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, final thoughts. I don't know. This was fun. This was really fun. Yeah. We hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, we're really excited to give you. Um, our, our lovely Patreon subscribers, some more exclusive content like this. Um, yeah, I think if you guys like it, uh, we certainly love doing it. We can think about doing it for some other games, yeah. some other big games, mm -hmm. maybe Final Fantasy. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this was really great. Let us know what you think. But that's it. <laughs> Spoiled it all. We did. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>